What's going on? Welcome back. My name is Brandon and today I'm going to be installing a LED backup light on the trailer and we're going to be installing a backup camera. In a previous episode we already installed the camera on the interior cargo area and I believe with this system we can have up to four cameras. One of the next things I want to get done guys is I want to get this panel all put back in place here on the back. You can see I've added some wire loom to the existing wires that are already there just to help prevent any chafing. I've replaced all the factory uh, scotch locks with heat shrink butt connectors and just to get you up to speed I talked about it in last week's episode. The white one is ground and then we've got the black wire is the backup lights. Uh, so when I put it in reverse, it'll energize this wire. The blue is camera power. And you can also set it up, this camera, so that it triggers the camera when you put it in reverse to turn the camera on. I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna have it set up so that the camera is always gonna have available power when it's plugged in. So when you're driving down the road, you can actually look in behind you as well as it'll be visible when you're backing up. In order for me to be able to put this panel back in place here, I gotta get this all buttoned up. So we're gonna install the backup light and the rear camera. Just kinda show you real quick what we've got here. So here's the camera, and then here's a piece that comes with it. Now what this is for is so that you can coil up all this slack in here, including that connector. So if you ever have to replace this camera, you can take the camera off and you can have the connector right there passing through. So that's that's kind of a good way to do it. I've got a nice small grommet that fits the size of this wire right here. So that's what we got to do next. We got to place the camera, make a mark, put a hole through it for the grommet, and then wire it up on the inside and mount the camera on the outside. Now as far as placement goes, I'm kind of limited. I can't put it underneath the drip edge in the top edge of the door. It's just not enough room. So I'm going to put it to the left of that center uh, marker light. Now this also comes with like an adhesive mount uh, that, so I can mount it to the top of the roof and have it facing back. That's not a bad idea but that's not really how I want to um, do this. This is all a one-piece roof. Uh, it has no leaks and I don't want to go um, you know running wires over the face of it and then drilling holes through it and I don't want to go through the top. So I think the best installation for me as far as I'm concerned is I'm gonna install it something like this. That way it's protected here. The wire will be completely concealed and hidden. And uh, I think it's just gonna give us an overall really good installation. So what we gotta do right now is mark this camera out, put a hole where the, uh, where the grommet's gotta go and uh, get this in place. All right, I got a black permanent marker. Just gonna hold this up here, set it where I think it looks good. That looks pretty good right there, and mark out, mark out the holes. I will just make a circle where that is so I can put my grommet right smack dab in the middle of that. Now remember, the rib material of this roof is one inch thick, so I just gotta make sure that this hole is not within that one inch or it's actually gonna drill right through this rib. And I can actually see right here, it looks like uh, that's the bottom edge of the rib, so we'll just clear that. Let me show you guys how I figured out what size grommet I needed. So I just went through my grommet assortment. It's just an inexpensive Harbor Freight grommet kit and found a grommet that fit neatly over the wire that I didn't have to force it through, but didn't have a whole lot of gap around it because I want to be able to uh, caulk around it as well. So now to figure out what size hole I need to drill, then I just took just this little tool right here. You don't even have to measure. You don't even need to know what it is. And just closed it down on this to see where it had just a little bit of play when I moved it all the way around. I can feel just a little bit of play right there. So I can go just a little bit tighter and check it all the way around. Okay. So now I know my hole's got to be that big. So then I just went over to my drill index and found one that fit just like that. And that was this one right here. So now I know that this drill bit will work perfect for that grommet. All right, here we go. Now I'm going to drill it.
there. That looks good out here. There's no burrs anywhere. Now I'll go inside just to make sure there's no burrs there. Then I can put this grommet in so that the cable doesn't get damaged. And there we are guys. Got a little bit of a burr on the inside so we'll get rid of that. This is the wire that comes with the kit. This is the other half that plugs into the camera and you can see the hard wires here. You've got green, which would be the trigger wire. Like I said, if you wanted to put your vehicle in reverse and then have the camera come on, you'd hook this up to your reverse lights of the trailer or a switch or whatever you wanted to, to activate it. The red one would be power and black is ground. So now that we've got the grommet in, now we can feed this through from the outside in. Push all this slack inside the trailer and keep very little outside here and you'll see why because this is going to get tucked inside that camera housing. I'm going to leave about probably three or four inches just so you can see this you know the outline of where it's going to go so it can make basically like a loop a nice comfortable loop inside that housing. Now we just got to drill it out for the mounting screws. Now we'll slide our gasket over this piece. That's just going to help ensure it's sealed even more. I put a little bit of black RTV silicone in there. I don't know if you can see it, but just to help seal things up. We've got all the spare slack in the back of the camera and then hook it up. It's a twist lock and it's got a, it's also got an O-ring on it as well. And here it is guys. We've got it all wired up. I've got the reverse backup light all in place and I got the backup camera all in place. Now we just got to go wire it up and try it out. This is going to be the maiden test right here if it works. She's going to be putting it in reverse here in a second. Ha! Look at that. Yeah, put it in drive. Yeah, now back to reverse. Perfect. You guys are asking how bright is it inside the trailer without any 120 volt lights on and this is it right here. So this isn't even running off the battery. This is just literally running off the truck, which probably if it wasn't running off the truck, it'd probably be even a little bit brighter. So, but when the truck's hitched up, it's got power in here. So, but that goes down to this, which once these get power from a battery that's gonna be sitting here, I think that these lights are going to be even brighter, but it's plenty bright in here. You could easily, you know, work on a vehicle in here, work on a motorcycle. It's plenty bright. And that's all there is to it, guys. Next week, we're going to be finishing up the trailer. I'm going to be installing the cabinet doors, finishing up the interior, and I'm going to be installing that halo system, and we're going to be trying it out. Next week, we're going to wrap this up. New videos every Friday, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, God bless.